I just wonder, there's a couple of flags here. There's, there's about eight that actually um, were gazetted. Um, a lot of them were July 14, so I'm not too sure when. And there's about 491 dwellings that, that nothing's been done. If, I know you've got here developer preparations, design funding, property negotiations, etc. Are we keeping a really good eye on those? Because they're... I mean, maybe we should take those out and put them some on their own so that we can red flag them. Because a couple, I mean, some of them are quite small, but there's one for 263 dwellings and another for 115. That's weird. So, through you, Madam Chair, um, in some of these cases, and this is the sort of information we can elaborate on in future reports. Yeah. Uh, um, Let's take the first one, for example, Addison. Um, we know that nothing happened uh, in terms of the HASHA process. HASHA is Housing Accords and Special Housing Areas Act 2013. The developer wanted an SHA, but then they made the decision that it was more practical in their particular case to proceed under what we generally refer to as business as usual, consenting. So their activity does not appear in this uh, but I think it's probably something we need to include in the table where they are actually proceeding under the normal consenting process that we actually indicate that in this table for your information. That said, there are some where nothing has happened. In some cases, a, a developer has a portfolio, they, they got an SHA, they changed their priorities and decided they didn't want to progress with, that, with this particular site, but they may be progressing with another one. So. These are the sorts of decisions that developers make. In some cases, they, they, they've, they've hit some roadblock and, and nothing's happened for reasons that we possibly don't even understand. Yes, yeah, so further to that, Madam Chair, thank you. I mean, Addison's <coughs> actually got a pre-application um, lodged, but I'm talking about ones that nothing's happened. Yeah, so Addison lodged a pre-application, then subsequent to that, they decided not to progress with it through the what was in the Housing Project Office that is now the Development Programme Office. Yeah. They did progress through the normal consenting team. So yes, the ones that uh, we have reported previously on um, a little bit more detail about why we think things aren't progressing in the, in the relatively small ones where nothing is happening, and we can do that again. One of the things we pointed out at that time was all those SHAs where nothing is happening, uh, they represent a very, very, very small part of the overall yield expected from SHAs. They generally tend to be very small SHAs with nothing's happening. Yeah, and, and there's one, two, three, four of them that are, but the, I mean, the red flag is the 263 ones, and one, that's, I was just, and maybe we could just look at those later, sure. have them in a different area next time so we can sort of see them a bit better. Yeah. I mean, but this is great. I mean, just, Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Webster. I've got Councillor Philip Iana, Cooper, Penrose and Wood. And just before, when we finish this item, give some thought to breaks, timing, carrying on. Yep. Don't need to decide now. We'll see how we feel. Councillor Cooper. Oh, sorry, Councillor Philip Iana, then Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Chair. And, and it's just a, a, a very small comment. Um, thank you for the, the chat. And, and I mean... Uh, the thing for me is the request date and gazette date there because it's interesting uh, how many people get mixed up around when it actually came through the council. This spells it out clearly. Uh, the last comment for me is, is look, I, I'm, I don't know what some of the acronyms here are, but do I just get hold of you and say, hey, what does this mean? Uh, I don't know whether there was... I didn't see a key to this, but... We will include a key in the next version. Oh, there you go. Sorry, Mr. Mr. My bad. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to ask about developer contributions because there was um, a member of the opposition this morning stated in the paper that he thought it was, the impression was that he didn't like the idea that we were getting more developer contributions. But wouldn't, would this be an expected outcome of building more houses and, yeah. you, know, a, you know, tripling <laughs> of our consents <laughs> over the last while? The and well, also the fact that the developers are paying and not the ratepayers. Is this, yeah. this, is, yeah. is this quite normal, a normal outcome of a rapid increase Transport, in North building? Yeah. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I haven't read the... Uh, I, I saw the headline. I Although, didn't read the article, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, uh, 
just reflecting on that. Just keep focused, Dave. Mm. HBO. Oh, they're on 9% yeah. or something. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. Matter. Thank you. All right. Okay. Leave it there. I guess we'd hope we'd get more money. That would be good. Leader on 9%. Councillor Penrose. Sorry. sorry. Oh, sorry. thanks, Madam sorry. Chair. And I just want to say, David, uh, it's a damn good report. And um, and as we know, that uh, come this summer, this uh, earth season, this uh, come October, uh, there's going to be a lot happening out of the ground. Uh, but it's going to have some challenges and some complexities across the Auckland region. You know, additional truck movements, additional vehicle movements. You know, it's going to. We're really going to start grinding a bit, but um, I have to say that uh, uh, from a regulatory side of uh, the arm of it as well, uh, it's, it's a huge complexity, as I mentioned around this table often. You know, uh, we get accused many times that uh, we're slowing the process down. Uh, you know, but uh, what I'm hearing often at the moment is that engineers are short, engineers are stretched, and engineers are holding the process up too. You know, so um, there's a whole uh, compelling argument here. Uh, there's no quick fix to it, but I just want to say that, you know, working together, and that's a, a damn good report, so thanks, David. Thank you. Thank you, <coughs> Councillor Penrose <coughs> and Councillor Wood. Yeah, thank you. Um, just in relation to all these SHAs, um, I mean, we, we've, and I know out in the west around Whanuapai and Hobsonville, Whanuapai is an example where there are developers that want to go ahead with developments, but <coughs> they've been, they haven't got the infrastructure there and wastewater especially, but uh, I was just wondering, do these, are these taking preference over any future um, developments? I mean, does this give them a guarantee that they're going to be plugged into the infrastructure once the unitary plan comes on board? Um, obviously, it'll change the complexion in relation to uh, what can be developed. But infrastructure is going to be an issue still for the future, and we're talking about what a precinct planning or, or um, you know, that that type of work. So, <coughs> where does this where does this leave us? I don't, I'd hate to see us kind of get into a dwell where we we don't kind of keep the momentum going. Well, I think the momentum will carry on, but it won't carry on under um, the housing accord uh, specifically. Um, oh. All of the SHAs had to meet an infrastructure requirement. Um, which is built into the HASHA legislation, that the infrastructure is either there or likely to be there. Um, that may be primarily bulk network infrastructure, which is the first thing you need to consider. Like, is there capacity in the local water network or in the local roading network? But there are always, particularly with greenfield sites, there are always a lot more infrastructure issues that need to be investigated through the master planning and the plan variation process. Generally, those commitments fall on, on the developer, um, and that's just a normal state of affairs. Uh, in some cases, the council uh, is part of that solution, but overall, uh, the, the council making decisions to support an SHA is expressing confidence that the, the means are either there or are likely to be there to get houses coming out of the ground. And, uh, and, and so the rest is really just about working together through the consenting process and getting the infra infrastructure built. That said, I, th I think one of the reasons why we're stopping at tranche 10 is because we've made pretty much uh, full use of the available bulk infrastructure. And so that's why you've got a future urban land supply strategy to essentially uh, tell the story about how the next uh, wave of land supply is going to come forward and how that's going to be supported by infrastructure. So it's a kind of a handover. So will, it, <coughs> will that be work that will be worked through in the next prior term of council now, Madam Chair? Hmm. Uh, well, it's already happening, and obviously you'll, you'll be aware of um, <coughs> uh, the work happening in terms of the future uh, transport and future growth areas, uh, the <coughs> structure planning work for Whanuapai, which is, the, uh, which is in, in the future of the land supply strategy, is... Uh, one of uh, two areas indicated for second half of the first decade. Uh, so there's already one SHA in there, a whole lot were requested, but this committee uh, uh, made the determination that it's, it's important for that area, it's such a large area, to have a comprehensive structure plan before we uh, go consenting more development. Uh, so if you've got land in that area, you're in a good location and you're not going to miss out. Uh, you just won't get an SHA right now. So what's the time frame for, say, that structure planning? Because, I mean, Long Bay took forever, so it won't, it won't take won't be as long as Long Bay. No, this, this, this approach will be much, much faster. Um, it's, it's already underway. Uh, I, I, I'm not personally 
involvement with it, but I, I think uh, you'll, you'll see rapid progress in the planning for Whanuapai very soon. Thank you, Councillor Wood. I think that's end of questions. I'll put the recommendation. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, carried. Thank you very much. Now, just, yeah, and good work. It's hugely appreciated. So I think we will take a half an hour break. Just looking at the, we've got some fair grunty items then to deal with and I think it's probably best done fresh so I'm going to move an adjournment for just around half an hour Councillor Webster, I'll put that all those in favour please say aye, aye. 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 against, carriage, thank you 13, 14.